Welcome back, friends, to a very smoky Monday morning on the homestead. So if I didn't have enough to do with the move, painting the new house, remodeling the shop, what else is there? Nursing a bad shoulder? <laughs> My realtor informed me that, oh, by the way, you need to build a whole rail around the deck of, the, of your uh, original homestead uh, before the appraiser gets there. Uh, or we'll have to reset that back a couple weeks. <laughs> so Jack and I jumped on this yesterday and got a good bunch of it done today. So today's uh, Monday. He's going to be here this afternoon at 4. It is currently about a little after 8 o'clock, so we shouldn't have any problem getting that done today. So I'll share as much of that as possible with you. It's turning out pretty good. It was supposed to, all I had to do was something temporary, uh, but you guys know how it is. I can't do temporary. I don't want to leave something that I wouldn't be proud to show anyone. So that's what I came up with. So that's what $500 of lumber will buy for you right there. Lost footage. I did, I thought yesterday or a couple days ago that I'd lost a whole bunch of footage that I shot of the shop installing the compressor uh, and such. And I didn't, I found it. So that's what you have today. So it's a little bit out of order. If you're a little bit confused and scratching your head, uh, that's what it is. So we'll roll into that next. So stay tuned. We'll jump after this tomorrow. We'll, we'll jump on the handrail. You'll, I'll share that with you, but uh, we'll get things back in order. So thanks for watching. Enjoy the video. We'll see you over on the other side. Welcome back everyone. So fortunately I've got Jirai to help me here today and we have lots of stuff planned to do. So. He's pulling out the framing that was originally done for these windows. It, so some folks have been asking about the squares there on that west wall. Those were done for future windows. Now, I don't want any windows, right? Why? <laughs> Having windows, uh, I had wind transit lighting in my last shop, and it was a nightmare to try to deal with the lighting uh, shooting video inside because the sun is moving across and, and the light's changing all the time. That's why I'm so thrilled about this building zero windows. I don't want them. I want to control my own light that I'm not dependent upon anything. So it just makes it a lot easier. So he's yanking these things out, starting to, to do that framing that I quit yesterday and I'll start laying out for the big walls. But I got to go grab the compressor right now. We'll bring that in and that will determine our next wall length. Mollies or anchors. I don't know the exact terminology. Now, these are similar to the Tapcons we used yesterday, uh, just way more robust. These, you wouldn't want to rely upon these as something like that, where it's so much vibration. And this is what they look like right here. So these are uh, 5 8 uh, 5 8 eighths diameter by 6 inches long. And how they work is you drill a, a pretty large hole. So we have a 5 8 concrete masonry bit here. We'll drill that. And then as you tight, you pound these in, as you tighten them up, this collar right here um, hang, kind of hangs up and then it, it squeezes out on this on that bulbous end you see right there and, and makes a really tight wedge. So the tighter you tighten it, the harder that it holds with your nut and your washer. And then those will stick up and go through the, the feet and that's a really good solid way to anchor those. So let's go lay out for our holes and we'll drill our first one and um, hopefully we don't hit any rebar. Jiraiya knows how to do it right. Rather than cutting or making a measurement, cutting a piece, going over and all that walking and everything, He's gone through there and he's measured everything. So he's basically made a cut sheet. Every single piece, he's writing it down. Then he'll go over to his cut table and cut all those to length. And then it saves a ton of time, especially if you're working by yourself. It's nice if you have two people where you can have one person cutting and one person shouting measurements. But if you're working by yourself, that's definitely the way to go. When you're laying out for masonry bits, I've mounted several compressors this way. The first time I did it, I made a mistake and I marked all three of them and then came, moved the compressor and then drilled them out and they didn't line up very well. Those masonry bits, they tend to wander a little bit. So your best bet is, is to get, go to the one that's the hardest to get to, which is typically one in the back, mount that, put your compressor on it, then mark these, mark these one at a time. Don't pre-drill them. Uh, it doesn't seem to work out very well. Well, I hit something hard in there. I don't know exactly what it is, but I think we're okay if we check our depth. Now, bear in mind here that this is not holding anything other than just keeping the thing from bouncing around. The weight of gravity, of course, is gonna hold it down, but our depth, if we check there, is right there. So we're in the threads. I didn't need anchors this long, obviously. Uh, that's just kind of what, what I got because I wasn't sure how thick the thickness of the foot but we'll cut off whatever's extra, but that gives us enough to bite in there. So I think that'll work just fine. So we've got that hole cleaned out. We can 
Oh, I didn't get that very cut very straight there, did I? That straightened it out there. There, I can hear it bottom out. Same deal, left yep. and then right? Yep. And be ready, it could drop on those threads at any moment, so just watch your fingers. Now, I'll support it there. Give it a little uh, whack over there, see if it drops down on. There should be plenty of room. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if I drilled these out and I didn't drill that one out. Back when I originally installed it, I'll bet I'll bet it won't fit. Uh, let me grab one. Let's tr let's try it for f size here. That's probably what happened. Did did I have all three mollies in there at the other shop or two? That might explain it. Just roll it back a couple inches. Good. Oh, it's too small. Okay, I'm gonna have to auger that out. Um, all right, so grab, go ahead and set it back down. Let's grab uh, two more cutoffs from plywood, or a two by four, and then we'll just rotate it here and I'll auger that out. Okay, I think I've decided. I keep going back and forth here. I was gonna do five foot, but that's taking five feet out of the main at work area for storage. And this is not a storage area, I gotta keep that in mind. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come out to four. Uh, four foot that gives me a good walkway there and the reason why I think I can get away with that is because the shelving that we're going to have is going to be recessed into the wall uh, let me show you so here's four foot this is similar where the wall will be it gives me plenty of room between the the beams right here but the thing is is the walls are only going to be to right here the walls right here this is all open and this is a good eight inches back in there from just the thickness of these of these um Gertz, excuse me, I, was, I had purlins and Gertz mixed up um, for, for shelving right there. So even if we had a 12 inch shelf, that still gives us plenty of room there to do that. So we're gonna go with the four feet. This stack here is all 12 footers. These will be our studs. So we'll need, for the four foot wall, we'll need four of these cut. We gotta cut an inch and a half, or three inches off of them. So we wanna end up with 12 feet. If you have the room, the quickest way to frame up a wall is to do it on the ground. And how the professional framers will typically do it is they'll take your bottom plate here, which is pressure treat, like we talked about yesterday, and then standard or better for your top plate. Now we know our studs are gonna be every 16 inches, right? So if we put these together, we only have to do our layout one time. So we know we have inch and a half right here. We don't have to mark that, right? We're gonna have, a, obviously we're gonna have studs on the end. We're gonna pull off 16 inches. Now the 16 inches needs to be to the center of the stud. And that being an inch and a half, then we come back here three quarters. So you come back three quarters, and this is how you do your layout with a cross through it. Now that tells you that your stud, the edge of it goes right here, and it goes to the right side of that cross. Over here, if you look on your tape measure, you'll see these 16 to 32s. These layouts will be, la will be highlighted in the red, so you don't have to do the math. And we'll do the same thing. We're going to come back three quarters of an inch, make our cross like that, like that. Now that's our layout completely done right there. Four studs, one, two, three, four. Now the reason why you put these two together on your layout is so you, once you've done, done that, you can just transfer it over and you only have to do it one time. Now on this pressure treat, make sure you really put a heavy mark because it's hard to see once you get down there in the dark. Now we know we have stud, 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 stud. Our layout's perfectly uh, the same and now we can start putting laying our studs in.
Oops. So I think if we go pretty well tight to this I beam, I, beam, I think we're going to... I'm surprised. I'm, it surprised me how square this building is. Whoever built it, they did right. a good job. One quick thing also, Jariah probably knows this, but uh, if you have these really long studs, uh, crown them, meaning that look down them and look and see what the bow is. Make sure that the, you, you do the bow the same way because you get some bowing in and some bowing out. If you look down a wall, if you use drywall or something, it just looks terrible. So unless you use engineered studs, you're just gonna have that, especially with the long ones. So crown them, look at them, make sure you check the bow, put it, Put a, a V pointing to the bow portion where it's convex um, and put, I typically put those to the outside.